Hello everyone, this is Al-Fadi and uh, we're back again into the uh, new series that we're doing on the Quran and the corrections that were done to uh, its early manuscripts. And with me here in studio again is Dr. Jay Smith. Uh, Jay, welcome back and uh, please help our audience understand now uh, the significance of what we're trying to do here in terms of assessing this new book. Excellent. Now, we a number of series ago, we did talk about the difficulty that Muslims have whenever we talk about variants. Uh, and invariably, they think variance is nothing more than kira'at or ahruf. Uh, define those terms. I mean, when you're talking about kira'at, I'll, I'll uh, have you take a shot at the ahruf things. But uh, kira'at basically is different dialects. That's the, the easiest way to explain it. And uh, believe it or not, it wasn't canonized. Uh, at least the uh, idea didn't wasn't brought up until almost almost like 50 to 100 years later, and at the same time it didn't become canonized as the seven th uh, seven readings until almost 300 years after the supposed revelation of the Quran. Mujahid is the one that supposedly right. do that. So we're but yet whenever Muslims. Uh, hear us saying that the Quran was changed uh, when we talk about Uthman in, in, in uh, Sahih Bukhari, volume 6, hadith number 510. It refers to the fact that at the time of Uthman, 652, uh, that he was told that there were different readings. And so he quickly got Hafsa's copy that was uh, sitting under Hafsa's bed, one of the wives of Muhammad, uh, that had been done in 632 by Zaidi bin Thabit, had that copy made into other copies. Right. And he, there were four people that were given the responsibility. That was Zaidi bin Thabit, Zubair, Alas, and Hisham. There are four of them. And he turns to them and says, "If be careful, if you have any disagreement amongst you, That's right. use the Qur'ashi dialect. Which indicate immediately we're talking about dialects. Okay, and dialect in a written text means what? A dialect in a written text it means that you have to pronounce the word in a certain way. Okay, but written text. The, yes. You, written you're, text. You're, you're looking at something and you're reading it, you know, in your own dialect. Whether you have diacritical markings or not, you look at the word and you decide how you're going to pronounce it. In order to follow a certain dialect, you have to have something in the written text to make a different dialect. You have to have vowelizations. Dialectic That's differences right. Right. is the difference, how you pronounce it with the U, the A, and the E. And we see this, of course, in the resume itself. There are different examples sometimes of how to write certain words. That also is an indication of how people used to read it. Let me well. use probably the most common one. I mean, you hear that famous song, you say potato, I say potato, you say tomato, I say tomato. That's a looking at one word, P-A-T-O-T-O. P O T A T. See now this is gonna go viral, you know, See, right here. Suddenly people are saying, "Wait a minute, he's completely mis mis miswriting it." No, yeah. it's actually the same. The same word is written down. It's P O T A T O. Yeah. I'm not changing it because what I, because of my. Uh, it's not changed because what is written there. The written text is always P O T A T O. Right. The confusion is on how you pronounce those vowels. Correct. Correct. So the British say potato. In America, we say potato. It's still the same word written. Am right. I correct? That's right. But it even gets more complicated with the Quran because I wish it was as simple as just the same word said differently because sometimes the same word means something totally different. Let's look up and let's look on the screen right now and let's look at this razm. There on the right, you can see the Samarkand manuscript. That's right. Now, when you read that, can you read that? Looking at it. Well, if, if you do not really know how to read manuscripts, it will be extremely difficult uh, for a Muslim to even know that this is, first of all, it's Arabic, second, that's a Quran, and third, what every word mean because there are no dottings or diacritic markings here. And there's also no vowelization. There's That's no right. fatta, which is the a ah sound. There's no dama, which yeah. is the u uh sound. And there's no kasra, which is the e sound. None of these exist on this manuscript. That's right. I mean, I mean, because I look at manuscripts all the time, I can tell you there's the word Allah in there, and nas in there, Allah in there. I mean, but, but you still, even me, I have to look at it carefully and make sure that I'm looking at the letters correctly. Let's look at the next one now. Let's look at this manuscript here. Uh, this is the Sana'a. Manuscript. 
And that's one that I'm passionate about because I'm doing my research, my PhD research on that. And I'll just give a quick overview of what this Sana manuscript is. I mean, by the way, there's thousands of perishments. By the way, the one I'm focused on uh, specifically uh, uh, has to do with the, what is called the polymsis, meaning that it was a piece of leather that was written on it and then it was wiped off and another layer written on top of it. Now, the scholars want to argue that the difference in time between the two layers, the lower layer and upper layer, has been 50 years. I would argue that that's not the case. It was almost instantaneously. You know, Because why would you small... wash off something and write over top? That's right. That's right. Why would you do it? Yeah. Well, the reason is because you made either made a mistake or you've changed it or you've seen something or different. Or received instructions, you know, that uh, you have to make some uh, changes to match a standardized reading. Absolutely. Now, take a look at this. Are there any yeah. dots in that script that you can see there? Not at all. And this one is even more complex, by the way. This is kind of like an example of the Hijazi, the Mayal, you, know, uh, uh, you know, style of writing. Okay. Can you see there, the, the letters are slightly slanted to the right? Correct. Right. And ma'il me, ma means slanted. That's right. That's in Arabic, ma'il meaning something slanted. So here's a sanaa. This would be actually an older script, would it not, what you're looking at? That is correct. That is correct. I mean, actually, a rule of thumb, a Hijazi is older than a Kufi, you know? Uh, that's why when somebody tells me the Samarkand is an older manuscript or one of the oldest, I would laugh. I'd say, no, that's a Kufi, meaning it's at least 8th century. Okay, and this the date that has been given to this by the scholars who have looked at it is 705. That's the upper layer. That's right. The, the palimpsest, there's an actually a lower layer, not on this particular page, Correct. but we have done that in, the, in our other episodes. We have looked by using ultraviolet light. You can That's actually right. separate the two layers, and the lower layer correct. would be And I'm higher. doing a study already on the, on the upper layer right and you'll now. And this is part of your doctoral thesis That's right, right now. Right. So we're getting into your area. You could go on for hours on this. But let's now look at one more slide. Take a look at this one here. This is from the Topkapa, uh, probably the most famous manuscript. Let's just go back and forth. Look at the back what we just looked at there. Look at the script there, and now look at the script here. Can you tell there's two different scripts here? Yes, the style of writing, that's number one. Number two, I can see some uh, illumination or uh, some separation, uh, as you see in the bottom, uh, decoration, if you wish. And then we see dottings. Dottings, but the dottings are a different color. Correct. Which means they are added at a later date. That's correct. But look at the script. This is known as the Kufic script. Let's go back to the one before. There is this Ma'il script. This is a more archaic script. This is early 8th century. This is more uh, early to mid 8th century. So there's about 30. Correct. Some would say even as, as many as 40. There are some scholars say that parts of the Topkapi, some of the surahs actually come after 749, possibly even as up to 770. So we're talking about even up to the late 8th century. But this is the one that Muslims like the most because it's the most complete. But even the Topkapa, which is later than the Sana, it doesn't have these diacritical marks, except for a few that are starting to be introduced. Correct. Uh, obviously at a later, later stage. And you can see there's also a decoration at the bottom. That's that right. decoration also helps to date it because that is showing that it comes from a certain place. Now, the scholars like uh, Altikulic and Esanalu, they would date this. They would say it's from, they they confuse everybody because they're saying it's the second half of the first century AH, which would be 670 to around 721, and the first half of the second century, which is 721 to 770. So actually what they're saying is 100 years they can exactly. date it. That exactly. doesn't very helpful. It's 100 year. You know. And I know some Muslims who have been attacking me on this. They say, yeah, he said the first half, the second half of the first century, therefore it's 670. Whew, well, you, you have to read the whole phrase. They're yeah. actually putting 100 years into there. Muslims right. would love to say that this is a 7th century manuscript. This is not a 7th century manuscript. This is an 8th century manuscript. Nonetheless, can you still see, even by the early uh, to the mid-8th century, there still really is no canonization of any diacritical marks and of any vowelizations. In fact, that, I don't, do you see any Dhamma, Kasar, or Fatah there? Not at all. Not at all. So they yeah, yeah. still they haven't introduced it's, it's the dotting system that began to help with that. Okay, we'll get to this as to why this. Let me show you another yeah. one now. This is a Shiite uh, Quran, and here you can see the early Shiite Quran. And, uh, this is known as Ali's Mus Quran. Ali, that's right. Musahali, yeah. who is the uh, the the fourth caliph. That's right. And uh, no diacritical marks, and certainly no vowelization. Why is this important? Let's look at the next slide. Take a look at those letters. What are these letters? Well, I mean, it appears that they are alphabet letters, the Arabic alphabet letters. Without the dotting, of course, it'll be hard, but that's what it appears to be. Okay, these are the 28 letters, but look at, let me show you what I'm going to do. Take a look at these letters as I put them up. There, you can see 
the alif of alif. Why don't you just read each one as I put each one the up? The first one is an alif, you know, the first letter. And the second one I put up? Kaf. Okay, and the third one? Lam. And this M- one? Meme. Ha. Okay. Those are one more to go, and it's the... Wow. One, two, three, four, five. So six of the 28. What's significant about those six? Well, I mean, they're the one that uh, can survive without having a dottings. They are unique them. letters. Right. They need no dottings. In every case, whenever you have an alif, it's always an alif. Whenever you have a kaf, it's always a kaf or lam or mim or ha or wow. That's right. The other 22 require dottings. Which right? mean the, the letter itself can change. Okay, let's do that. Let's now look at this smiley face. All right? As I put up the dots now, we're going to put up a number of dots because that smiley face could be one of five letters, couldn't it? And nobody knows it. it's a letter until you start putting dottings, actually. Okay, there's the first one there. That will be a noon, for instance. Okay, what's that? Ta. Okay, what's that? Tha. So already we've got three different letters. In one look. Noon, In da, one resum, and tha. basically. All right. That smiley face is a resum. Now let's go, what about this one? Ba. And this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so two Five. more with yeah. the dots below the smiley face. That's right. All right, now let's do this. Ready? Real quick. Noon, ta, tha, ba, yeah. The Can same resum, by the way. This is one resum, one one harf, one letter. Imagine now you repeat it in a word okay. multiple times. Without those dots, it's just a smiley face. And it's open for so many ways to read so it. So there's five different letters that could come from just that one. And we see evidence of that. Okay, now let's do one yeah. step further. Let's look at three Smiley faces together in the upper right-hand corner. You can see there's just one, two, three. What would happen if we were to put dots above and below the line of those three? You'll be surprised what might happen. I mean, you have right here a handful of them. It can change the meaning. Look, one is bait, house. One is nabata, it sprouted. Bayit stayed over. Bent, daughter. I mean, it can go on. And it, it, it can vacillate between a verb, a noun, you know, and so on and so forth. In fact, we address something like this in a, a book that I had a privilege to participate in called The Quran Dilemma. And we had even an entire table like this that deals with as many as 30 different possibilities. So we have just found 19 here. You have found over uh, as many as 30 using the exact same three smiley faces. That's right. Just dots above the line. And here's what's so significant about what Jay is talking about and what I'm trying to uh, explain here is uh, this is how it used to be before the dotting. You have just resum without any dots, which mean it's open for interpretation, literally. That's why we have different ways of pronouncing things and reading them. So so don't tell me that I read it uh, one way and you read it the second way as if they're both the same. Which way is it preserved in the preserved tablets in heaven? You have to tell me that. Okay, so the word resum really just means the script without any dots. And, and you know, in Arabic, by the way, we say resum when you draw something, okay? So resum, you have the letters. You drew those letters and without dottings or markations. Every one of these manuscripts that we looked at, and we did look at a number of them there, every one of them were nothing more than scripts, like this one here that you have on there. There's, can you see? There's the resum. That's the resum, okay? That's right. No dots. There's another resum. There's a third one there. And then we put up another a fourth right. one. And uh, we ended with the Shiite Razum. That's right. All we're saying is the consonantal text. These are the consonants. No vowels. Correct. Can you now see that we're talking about a two completely different things when we're talking about Gerat? Gerat assumes that there's vowels there. Gerat really zero in, zeroes in on those vowels. That is correct. And in fact, I mean, at some point uh, uh, in this series, uh, or maybe after that, uh, I told you that we want to give a teaser about the Sana manuscript to show just one or two examples of this and how devastating those changes can be. We're going to go and we're going to ask the question concerning the Kira'at that has been, that you can find, the different Kira'at schools that you can find in the world today. Hatun Tash is a colleague of mine. She lives in London. She's from Turkey. She used to be a Muslim herself. She has taken it upon herself to try to find as many of these different Kira'at Qurans, different Qurans from different uh, schools. And she came up, she has been able to find 31. 
I'm just going to put up on the graph and let's just go look at it now. Let's look at just 23 of them. And each one of them, there is the Al-Susi uh, Kirat Quran. That's from the Al-Susi school, or actually it's a student named Al-Susi. Abu Jafar. Uh, there's Abu Jafar. Let's, if you go up, you can just do these names because you can speak a lot better than Yaqub. I can. Yaqub. Yaqub. This one, Ad-Duri, Abu Amr Ad-Duri, Al-Basri, Aydan. Uh, Ibn Amir, uh, Khalil. Khalaf al uh, uh, Khalaf, I'm sorry, from far away. Uh, al um, Al-Layth ibn Al-Layth, Khalil. Yes. Al-Layth ibn Khalil. That's the one. Warsh. Now, this is just one well of a number yeah. of Warshes. This is the first one. That's right. number one. This There's is another, another two. Warsh. Al-Asbahani. Right. Uh, ibn uh, Zamaz. Jamaz. Uh, another one of a so Duri. This is actually interesting because this is the same Duri. That's right. He no. did two. He contradicted himself later on. You'll see why. This one is... Uh, Khalif. Uh, Khalif again, yes. And uh, we have Al-Kasari. Al Al-Kasari, yes, okay. that's right, yeah. That one's too small to read even for me. Yeah. But can you see, I'm putting these up there. I'll go a little quicker now because we're gonna, so we don't run out of time. Again, it's kind of like small letters for us, so don't think like we don't know how to read the, uh, the words, but they're just too tiny for us. Uh, I want to just show you, these are 23 that she has... Been, uh, put up in this particular slide. And she, those are available, by the way, right? I mean, she found them in... in uh, well, this is a photograph and, of the yeah, ones I mean, in her own yeah, library yeah. in London. Right. Uh, this is what we have... And what I'm saying, where, where she found them, they were available. It's not like she uh, went and got it from a museum. And we that, took these 30... Yeah these 23 down to Speaker's Corner and go up on Fander Films and just see what happened. That's when right. the Muslims, they went berserk. It's great if you go up on Fander Films and see how they try to grab them out of our hands but even as we are leaving. But why did they go leaving. berserk? I thought, I thought they said it's just Karat. So what, what's the issue? They had no idea that there were these many differences because we were not just looking at the different Qurans and holding them up. We were actually comparing the Huffs, this one here, with every one of these other 22. So we were looking at this one and comparing them, and we were showing them that there are enormous differences, and we did that in our episodes last year. So I, want, I don't want to repeat it. But before we go any further, I want you to look at this graph here. This is Hatun's graph that she put together, looking at the 23 Qurans. I want you to look at, let's go, zero in on that black circle that I've just put up Which there. Which is Hafs. That's a little hard. Let's get another graph. Let's look at this one here. That black circle is the Hafs. Uh, that we're talking about that is our current crime. But look at all those names on the right side. If you can read them closer, you see Al-Bazi, you see Kunbal, you see Warish, Warish Shikalu, Balun, Hisham, correct. Uh, Ibn Zwan, Khalid. But look at the, right next to them, there are numbers. When you look at Al-Bazi at the very top, there's 1,094 next to his number. That means there's 1,094 variants between his Quran and the Quran that we're using today. Correct. Coming on down, look at Kalum. There is 1,700 variants. Coming on down to Abu al-Harith, al coming about uh, halfway Abu down Ali the page. Abu al yes. From Kufa, there are 5,000 differences between his Quran and mm -hmm. the Quran that we have today. That's right. And when we get to the Quran we have today, it is Hafs. See Hafs there? That's a, it's circled in black. He is from the school of Kufa. That means the city of Kufa. That's there right, are which five is in different southern cities. Iraq. You can see Mecca, Medina, Damascus, Kufa, and Basra. Those are the five cities that these Qurans come from. The, the next group of names are the teachers, and then there's sub-teachers, and then you have the students. And it's these students that were creating these different Qiraat Qurans, different right. readings of the Quran. Now, there, we have counted about 37 that are there on this graph. That means there should be 37 different Qurans that we should be able to find. Right now, we found 31 of them. Give us more time. We're still looking in Morocco and Jordan. We're looking around the different marketplaces. That's where you find them. Uh, they have all have been published. We'll probably find all 37 of them. But hold on a minute. Look at the dates. Look at the dates of these That's names. Right. Look carefully. That's right. Where are the dates are? 786, 864 AD, 810. So Ibn Amr is the oldest out of all of them, and he himself still about almost 100 years later. Look when he died. The guy, the guy yeah. that, that we're using, you know, the one that we are using today, Hafs, that's circled in black, look when he died, 796. That's that right. is the late 8th century. That's right. Muhammad died in 632. 
supposedly Uthman finalized the Quran in 652. We're now back to 796 before we finally get the Quran that they use today. But we don't even know if this is from Hafs because we don't have Hafs' original Quran. That's right, that's right. This is only something they decided in 1924 and here's the was thing. Hafs. In 1924, for instance, like if you open any uh, Bible translation, ESV, uh, New American Standard, you know, and so on and so forth, they'll mention to you that the translation committee chose to rely on certain uh, family of manuscripts. Well, that wasn't the case in the 1924 Quran. It was relied on oral transmission of Hafs. Oral transmission, not a written manuscript. Now, why is that important? It's okay. important because you're telling me that the Quran you have in your hand today somehow survived the last 13 centuries orally being transmitted without anything to substantiate that in a written form. Now, you hear this all the time. People always say, I don't care about the manuscript. Shabi Nadi even said this when he was confronted on this. Well, wait a minute. Well, I hope he will care after this show. Well, he, he said, I don't really care about it because we know that they were memorized. What did they memorize? Which, which Quran did they memorize? Did they memorize Khalid's or Warsh right. or Duri's? In fact, which of the two Duri's? Because he even contradicts himself. Even Hafs, we have multiple different versions of Hafs. We have by about the way. six or seven different right. Hafs. Yeah. Same thing of Warsh. And his character, by the way, has been attacked anyway. <laughs> yes, because he's very weak. Mm -hmm. Now, be before we end, it's important that we understand what we're talking about here. We're talking about the Kira'at traditions created in the late 8th century, early 9th century, right. 100 to 140 years after Muhammad and uh, death, and certainly after Uthman. And, and that's right. This and is not even the same century. So how can you have any supposition that uh, Uthman had, to, had, had different readings? These readings don't even come into existence that's right. until the 8th century, 9th so century. Ibn Mujahid, 300 years later, decided that there is seven, uh, basically, readings that are canonized. So out of what? Out of many Qur'an. So who gave him the right to decide which seven were they? And, and it's based on a weak tradition, by the way, the hadith. Even if that were true, what then was he burning? Because he did burn all the uh, uh, manuscripts. Uthman, you know what I mean? Uthman burned That's right. all these manuscripts that disagreed. They couldn't have disagreed with diacritical or kidhat. There was no kidhat in existence. with his own choice. Evidently, he was burning the consonantal rasm. Yeah, because he wanted to standardize it. So who gave him permission, by the way, to do this? <laughs> he was a caliph. You don't need permission once you're a caliph. That's right. So That's... is this not a human intervention? Exactly. Everything about the Quran is a human intervention. The Qur'an decided by a human 300 years later. Seven first, then they added another three. They made it the 10. Then they added another four. They made it the 14. And they said anything outside of that is considered to be... Uh, strange or shawad, basically. Who decided this? Okay. Can you understand yeah. now that this whole idea and argument of Kirat and Ahruf makes no sense for the 7th century? Yeah. It would make sense for the time that these different authors were creating the different schools of Kirat. Kirat they're all from the late 8th, 796, and up until uh, the early 9th. Then it would make sense, and that's yeah. why Muslims today are not looking at a timeline. If Uthman Let's just say hypothetically that's true. If he did, burnt these manuscripts, he was not burning them because of Karat, because they, they didn't even exist that early. He was burning them because the consonants were different. That's right. The rhythms were different. The consonantal text did not agree. Correct. Now, what we want to do today is can we prove that? And what we're going to be doing coming up in the next episodes is we're going to look at these differences. We're going to come back to this yeah. book. Once again, let us highlight this book by our dear brother Daniel Brubaker, and that's what we are going to invest the rest of this particular series on taking a look at these examples one at a time so that we are highlighting uh, uh, to you what we mean by these corrections and also bringing them to the forefront as just a teaser, a taste of many of those thousands that we alluded to already. Brother, thank you so much as always. We are so blessed to have you here, and I hope that people will feel blessed by your uh, contributions to this uh, unique field that I agree with you, no one uh, usually dares to venture into, and those who want to get into, they're always uh, extra careful. So we thank the Lord uh, for the knowledge that he has given us, for, his, for the freedom to, to share this freely, for the social media and the platforms that we use, and for dear brothers like our dear brother, Dr. J. Smith. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. 
Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.